The power drills and screwdrivers in the workshop somehow become more and more. I have a suitcase for almost every tool. In it they can be stored well and you have all accessories in one place. You don't have to search for anything and you don't lose anything. And you can also transport it well. But it's also a bit annoying to take the case, open it, put it all together and put it away off the world. That's how I handle all my mobile tools so that I don't lose anything. If I just leave the screwdrivers outside, they have the habit to vanish into thin air before my eyes. It's like going crazy. Whenever something has no fixed place, it just disappears when you need it the most. Sometimes you feel almost bullied by your tools because they are hiding or suddenly disappearing. I guess everyone knows the desperate feeling when something was just there and then suddenly just doesn't want to show up anymore. To change that, I want to build a French cleat module for my battery powered screwdrivers. The screwdrivers should hang in it and be always ready to hand. In the shelf above, I can store the batteries as well as all the small stuff drills, bits, chargers, everything that belongs to a screwdriver. It will be a somewhat more complex module, so I make a detailed plan for it. It will be at two levels and must offer space for all screwdrivers, including a bit of space for the future. The sides are sloped in the style of the shelves I built last time. For such a small piece of furniture, it's a good idea to create a material list from the plants with all the necessary parts and their dimensions. This makes cutting to size much easier because you just have to work through a list. So I'm busy sawing a lot of parts. The whole thing is cut from a 12mm thick multiplex board. I sorted and labeled the parts in little stacks. I cut out the slopes for the sides afterwards. Then I start marking the first part. This will be the lowest part of the module where the cordless screwdrivers will be hung. For this I have five little planks which run into a board at a 90 degree angle. I want to try not to have any visible screws and use flat dowels. So I'm busy milling the slots for the dowels for a while.
while the glue dries, I can continue with the next part. This will be the mini shelf for the batteries. It is matched to the dimensions of the batteries. The procedure is the same again. I mill into the edges simply once and offset in the surface left and right, so that the slot for the flat dowels becomes somewhat wider. So you still have some play when gluing and can move the parts back and forth a bit, so that it sits exactly flush at the end. Now I'll leave the whole thing overnight so that everything can dry. The next day I can unclump both parts. The bottoms or cordless screwdriver carriers or whatever you want to call them are still missing the parts on which the screwdrivers then will rest in the end. I bolt them on directly, but of course first of all pre-drill so that the screws do not tear out anything and lay exactly in the middle and in a line. It should look nice. Countersink the holes so that the screw heads don't protrude and then measure exactly so that the carrier protrudes on both sides equally. The next part is now aligned here. The distance between the two should be exactly 5 cm according to the plan. With such a 1-2-3 block you can quickly check and place the carrier correctly. Next I mill the slots into the back wall, which will be connected to the side panels. The side panels should cover the back later, so you can't see it from the side anymore. In the side parts I also make the slots for the shelves, which I attach again with flat dowels. Because the whole thing is symmetrical you can easily transfer the measurements from one side to the other. Before I glue it in place, I put it together to check if everything fits. Looks quite good. Only the mini shelf completely protrudes. After a little recalculating and measuring, I quickly found the error. I swapped those two corners as reference points when marking. This caused the lower shelf to slide upwards. And so, of course, the mini shelf doesn't fit anymore. So, take it apart and mill it again. Now it looks much better. I transfer the marking for the upper floor directly with the mini shelf as reference. Then I don't have to measure anything and it's guaranteed to be correct. Looks good after all. Except for his smiling arrow which ruins my sights, everything fits. So I can glue it together. Beforehand I erase all markings and send them away, 
and generally smooth all parts again and chamfer the edges slightly so you don't cut yourself. Then everything is glued and clamped. I leave it overnight again and continue the next day. The floors are not connected to the back wall at the moment because I just want to bolt them down. You can't see the back anyway and screws give a bit more rigidity than flat outs. And I thought about something for the smiling arrow on the side. If there are already slots for flat dowels, you can also use them. And so it's a good idea to attach a strip there, into which I can then insert bits and drills. While this dries now, I start with another module for the French cleat wall. This module will be quite simple, so I don't make a plan and saw every part free from the head. Make some space, I need the workbench. On these rectangles I mark the middle, that's by simply mark the point where the diagonals cross and then clamp them, so I can mill a groove with my router, which becomes straight thanks to the parallel stop. I do this with all parts, always opposing each other. Then I mark a half cycle, cut away the protruding corners and send the whole thing round. This becomes the back wall. I clamp the parts in place briefly and then drill the back wall and the part at the same time and screw it together. And it's a good idea to have some drill sizes double and drill. This round rod will fit well into the grooves I have milled. It just needs the right length. And then three of them. Once a piece has been cut to fit, you can use it directly as a reference and stop for the saw. The piece becomes a sandpaper holder, but there is still a tear of edge missing where you can cleanly cut the sandpaper. Because the sandpaper would grind away the wood over time and would then no longer have a sharp edge to tear off, I want to stick this aluminum angle on it. It should last longer. So I cut it to length and glue it with super glue. I let it dry and can continue on the screwdriver station meanwhile. The 
French clip bar is still missing to hang up the whole module. It is glued and screwed on additionally like our French clip bars here. The super glue should now be dry. The tear off bar I bolt on from the front end because there is no other way. Between the bar and the back wall I put two washers each so that a small distance is given and the sandpaper also fits through it. The French clip bar is still missing, the same principle as with the screwdriver station. And done. The cordless screwdriver station still lacks a strip left and right so that you can also use these compartments to hang screwdrivers. I also cut them at the beginning, but in the meantime I noticed that the screwdrivers have a different profile depending on brand and strength. And that my 12 volt screwdriver does not find any grip in the module and just slips through. Therefore I want to saw these strips again, this time a little wider, so that the screwdriver can find a place in this compartment. Then I glue the strip simply butt on. And it works. The 12 volt screwdriver hangs a bit tilted, but this is due to its buttons which are placed in such a way that it doesn't work any other way.
but the Angela screwdriver has no place here, no matter what I do. But because it has such a hook that you normally use to hang it on your belt, I can simply hang it on the side of the module. So it's always ready to hand. I want to hang the chargers here on the side of the module, but as long as I don't have electricity on my workbench it doesn't make any sense. So they will be stored on the upper shelf for now. <laughs> 